Generating a current source using MOSFET devices is actually quite easy. Um, since the beginning of chapter 6, we have been talking about the fact that a MOSFET, when it is in, when it is in saturation, uh, so if in saturation, we can say that ID is equal to K divided by 2 VGS minus VTH squared. So knowing that K is constant, uh, VTH is constant, this tells me that if I make my VGS, the gate source voltage, a constant value, meaning that the DC value uh, that doesn't change with my signal. So I'm going to have a, like some sort of sinusoidal signal coming he in here. If I make sure that the gate source voltage of the transistor is actually uh, independent of that signal, then I can be 100% sure that um, I'm going to get a constant ID. So I'm going to use a PMOS transistor to do that. Um, so instead of actually this current source, this ID current source, I'm going to replace it with a PMOS transistor shown inside this box, right? So what's special about this PMOS transistor? Well, I have gate here and I have source here and drain here for PMOS, right? Well, source is connected to VDD, so it's constant. And gate, I've connected it to some DC voltage, right? I'm going to call it V bias or VB. And as long as I make sure that this DC voltage is constant, then I'm sure that the gate source voltage is actually always constant. Therefore, the current that is this that this PMOS is actually generating, let's call it ID2, it's going to be always constant, right? Because remember, like for example, if I want to give it some numbers, VDD was 1.8. Um, let's say VB, I put it at 1.2, so that I have a 0.6 difference, right? For PMOS, remember, gate, source, gate voltage was supposed to be smaller than source voltage because then the tertiary voltage was actually a negative value and the gate source was supposed to be more negative than that negative value, okay? So now I have a current source and it's connected to the gate of my, to the drain of my NMOS transistor. Now, whatever is happening here, so if I have some signal going up and down here and I'm having the amplified version of that signal going up and down here, it's not going to affect the gate voltage or, or source voltage of the PMOS because both of them are connected to DC voltages, uh, DC voltage sources that they, their voltage doesn't change no matter what, right? So I'm going to have this ID2 as a constant current. And the nice thing about it is that this ID2 is actually doesn't have any place to go other than going to M1. So basically ID1 and ID2 are equal to each other. Therefore, I have forced my M1 transistor to have the current that I've generated using my PMOS transistor. Okay, so let's draw the small signal of this thing. So I start with V in. I'm going to show this signal source just for clarity. Uh, it comes to the gap of the gate source. Source is connected to ground. And between source and drain, I have the R naught. Oops, first let's draw the current source. Let's call this VGS1 because I have M1 and M2. So this is going to be GM1. VGS1. So these uh, annotation kind of tells you that there's no reason that GM1 and GM2 or VGS1 and VGS2 are equal to each other or have any kind of relationship with each other. Same about there are not. So I have an R0 1. Now, how do we continue this? Well, this is the drain of my M1, right? And the drain of M1 is connected to the drain of M2. So I'm going to have the same kind of story here. So let's draw it with a different color. Um, I'm going to have RO2 connected to the source of M2, which is, well, VDD, but VDD in the small signal is ground. So this is really the VDD. And, uh, well, I've got about the current source between drain and source, which is GM2. VGS2. Okay, now I have the gate of, so this is the VGS2, 
And what do we connect the gate of the M2? Well, it's connected to this DC voltage source. So basically in, in the AC analysis, that's it ground. Okay. Now that we have the, so where's my V out? My V out is actually at the drain of the two transistors. So this is my V out. Now that I have the entire small signal drawn, let's actually analyze it. The analysis is actually quite simple compared to the complicated circuit that I actually have drawn here. So the reason it's simple is that, look, VGS2 is between ground and ground. So this guy is zero. Therefore, this guy is zero. So like this current source is zero. If the current source is zero, the entire thing that I have in this yellow circle is gone because to the to the right of this R R naught two, basically I have a current source that is basically um, open circuit, so the rest of the circuit is gone. So in the entire M two in the AC analysis is replaced by simple resistor R O R naught two. So this is M two. So this is one of the lessons that we learned from uh, circuit analysis that if I have a transistor that the signal doesn't actually pass through that transistor. So like my signal is coming actually from here and going to the output and it never gets to this transistor because this transistor, the gate source voltage is actually set by two DC values. So when the signal doesn't actually come to this transistor, the transistor the basically simplifies in the AC analysis, it simplifies to a resistor. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that this, this current source, this transistor was a current source in the DC analysis and a resistor in the AC analysis. Now that I re I've replaced the M2 with, res with the resistor, well, the th things are going to be quite simple because this R0 R0 2 is from this point, the output to ground, and so is the R0 1. So I can simply say V out is equal to negative GM1 times VGS1, which is VN, times R0-1 in parallel with R0-2 times VN. So I bring V in here. And that's my gain. So the gain is going to be basically, again, gain of a common source amplifier is going to be just GM times the resistance. This is really resistance. in the drain of M1. So we don't have an RD or anything like that, but we have an R0-1 to ground and R0-2 to ground. So, and they're in parallel. So we just basically replace the RD or the load resistance with that, okay? So if I had a load resistance, like for example, from here to ground, RL, that would have been in parallel with these guys. Okay. Now the next question, let's just erase this to avoid confusion. Okay. The next part of the, this question is asking us, why not use an NMOS as the current source? Again, try to pause the video and try to think about why an NMOS is not used uh, for, as, for M2. I'm, I'm not, I haven't used an NMOS. And why basically the answer is that it doesn't give us a current source. And you have to think about it and tell me or well, tell yourself why this is not really, if I put an M NMOS for M2, it's not going to give us a current source. So to answer that, let's just draw it. So if I had the circuit like that, I connect to the same VP. I had the VDD here and I had V in here to ground. What happens is that I expected this transistor to be a current source, right? This M2. And based on this expression up here, I know that the, we have a current source if the gate source voltage is constant. However, my gate voltage is constant, but my source voltage is now here rather than being on VDD as, is, as it was in for for um, PMOS, right? So as my V in changes, 
this node at the V out, I expect it to change because it's an amplifier. Therefore, my VGS won't be constant. VGS2 won't be constant. Therefore, not a current source. What's bad about this not being a current source? Well, if it's not a current source, therefore, ID is changing. What is bad about ID changing? Well, remember, ID was setting the GM. So GM is changing because remember that we had this biasing plot, VGS ID, and we had this plot, and we said that the slope of this plot is really your GM. So when ID is actually changing, you're going up and down on this curve by a lot because, well, the signal here is not small anymore. It's amplified. So we're going up and down by a lot. And then what happens is that your GM is changing. Then you can't really say, this is my gain. Your gain is changing, right? So it's going to be all messed up. So we can never do... Uh, we can never use this circuit as an amplifier.